giving you a voice, and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. Our first question is from X Native on Discord, and he asks, uh, "How soon in the season do you start practicing with your robot?" Sarah, you want to go ahead? Yeah. So. I think it's about week four we finished the practice robot. Um, well, that's why kind of like when we try to aim to get it done. And then week five, try to get the competition robot done. Um, and then, you know, we try to get driving as soon as we can because that means we can test out is, hey, the scripper doesn't work or um, something's wrong with the code or we're having problems with connecting with the Rio. Uh, so it's, I'd say is the moment we get the practice robot up and we get some code onto it, we're driving which we try to get done and around. I, I think it's about week four. Um, and it's, you know, from there, it's just practice, practice, practice. All right. Uh, next question is from Jonathan uh, on 17, 15, 1706 from Discord. And he would like to know, what is your favorite part about first? And what do you feel sets it apart from everything else? Ooh. I don't know who wants to take that um, one or if you, maybe you all want to give a quick answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a hard question because there's, there's so many things I like about First. I like the community. I like the experience that it gives me in building a robot and in my case, being able to program a robot. Uh, I think it's really good. And I've heard from multiple people that this is kind of what they do in the workplace. Once you finish university and go out, this is kind of what it's like. So I, that, it's much it's worse. One of my favorite parts. <laughs> I mean, uh, well, that is exciting. I, I can only imagine. Sarah, you want to go next? Yeah. So, uh, so kind of for me, it's been kind of um, a lot. Of my older siblings have been on twenty fifty six, so I've kind of always been following first my whole life, and so it's always just been a part of me. Uh, and so, like you know, when I finally got onto the team and I'm finally actually doing stuff, you know, I met, I was able to meet so many new people experience so many new things, and I honestly don't think I would have gotten interested in the STEM field if it wasn't for FIRST Robotics. Cool. Tyler? For, for me, I think it, it, there's two parts to it. Um, the first part is the the kids on our team get so much out of it. I find that personally very rewarding to see. Um, I mean, we've had several graduating classes now, many of whom are done university and have started their own professional careers at, you know, um, very reputable companies. Um, and for me, for me to see the kids uh, be so successful after after being involved with this program is is personally very rewarding. Um, the other part that's really cool for me is that there's a community of of uh, so-called lifers, uh, guys like us who have been in this for um you know an awful long time now and so the camaraderie within within that group um when you go to events and you hang out afterwards and you do shows like this it's you know it's it's a cool group of friends and and that for me is you know it's 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 pretty cool too so those are my two things all right uh next question comes from james uh on team 58 asks uh, what strategies do you come up with at the beginning of the build season that influence the design of your bot? Um, so I don't know if that means specifically to last year or just kind of like in general, how do you approach um, strategy driving design? But I don't know, you can kind of answer that how you guys want. Uh, we, the main goal every year is win a world championship. That's like <laughs> the one box we haven't like checked off yet. So no, no, we haven't. There's been a couple Ooh. like little little close ones, but um, so that that's the that's the main driving goal. And then the question is, how do we do that? So you can either a, build a robot to win elimination matches, or you can build a robot to seed really well and pick the best robot to win elimination <laughs> matches. Um, so we like the latter option because that gives us control over our own destiny. Um, so we, we typically prioritize building robots to seed number one. Mm -hmm. And we've had reasonable success at that. So um, Yeah, and just to, before we go to the next question, just because that, that kind of hits on something that 
I've, I've always wondered about, oh. and I know I've talked to other people, is oh. how, like, how, you guys consistently, and obviously at district events or regional events, that's one thing. And, I mean, the streak is incredible. But, like, the biggest thing to me is the number of times you guys have seated number one in your division at Worlds is, like, I mean, you guys had, like, a six-year streak i think of doing that or something i don't remember the exact amount but it's like you know at some point you you end up having a really terrible schedule somewhere along the way and so how how is it what are the little things that you guys have done to make that happen you know because it can't just be good luck and all that i mean obviously that helps but um minimizing um moments of stupidity is really the, the biggest thing is like Every crimp, every wire, every if you if you can do every little thing to prevent um, the little mistakes that ends up costing you matches, that adds up over the long run. And in the in the last five years, we've had um, one electrical problem in one match, and we still won it. So, I mean, you could minimize those things as best as you can to control your own destiny. And then the rest of it is just showing up prepared, showing up with a robot that works every single match, um, knowing the strategies, knowing what your partners can do, knowing what your opponents can do, and, and doing your absolute best to, to prepare and, and be ready when, when qual matches start. Hmm. All right. Well, so and so because of that, obviously, like we said, you guys have seated first a lot. So our next question is pretty pertinent. Uh, the gaming robot from Discord asks, "What are your deciding factors when picking a team uh, for alliance selections? Uh, what are some red flags that you look for?" Uh, uh so like when we're looking at the scouting data, uh, you know, the night before eliminations happen, um, one of the big things we do look at is cycle time, and you know what. What are they looking undefended and what they look defended? Like, especially this year, there was so much defense that robot that completely shut during defense was something that some, we really wanted to pay attention to because, you know, like, especially because we're, we're expecting that we're going to get pretty far in the eliminations that we're going to face this heavy defense and we need to know, you know, will you be able to play through this or will you be shut down? Um, other things we look at is, do they have a lot of problems with dying? Like, if they're having a lot of calm problems with electrical... Um, the robot just falling apart. It's looking at all those little details which um, cause little red flags. Um, a lot of times in our scouting, uh, scouts can also insert little um, comments if they have any. So if they notice anything interesting or anything odd that we, you know, that might raise a red flag, we look at that as well. So as a, as a follow-up on that, so like you talked about obviously scouting defense, and I think especially this year, defense obviously was really important for everybody. Um, so when you guys are scouting for the defense, is there anything quantitative you guys are doing for that other than just the fact that their offensive cycle times end up being longer during that match, and then you just kind of infer that there was defense? Or are you actually scouting specifically the defense itself, or do you just kind of take you know qualitative notes about it? You know, What did you guys specifically do when it comes to defense on that? Uh, in the scouting app, when a team uh, is doing a cycle, there's a checkbox for whether they were defended or not. So we can track what their cycle times are when they're defended and their cycle times when they're not defended. Mm. Okay, that's re that's really smart because then that way, you, that way you're getting the cycle time of each cycle, but then you can also tell on that cycle that took an extra 10 seconds. Was that because of defense or was that just because of, you know, not good driving or whatever? Okay, yep. that makes a lot of sense. Um, our next question comes from TB Kahuna uh, from 3986, and they ask, how much flexibility do you give the drive team to adapt to game strategies, and who makes the, kind of, the final call on this? So obviously probably Tyler would be the good one to answer on that. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, strategy, the strategy changes every match, but generally within the match, unless something goes really, really poorly or a robot dies or flips over, the strategy generally doesn't change a lot um, mid-match. Um, but before a match, yeah, absolutely, strategies can, can change a lot. Like, um, who plays D? Uh, right. Do you play D at all? Um, mm. Those are all valid questions, and a lot depends from year to year. During the match, like, are you are you directing are your drivers a lot on like you know I score in this place next or whatever? Or are your drivers generally handing all of that and you're kind of looking at the meta for the whole alliance during the match? How do you how do you, how dynamically are you dealing with all of that? 
Um, that depends a lot on how experienced the driver is. Um, our driver this year is in his second year, and he's getting very, very good. So I give him uh, a lot more freedom, and I give him a lot less um, exact direction and just let him kind of do his thing. Um, and then I'm, I'm, as best as possible, trying to be mindful of the match as a whole and less on what our exact actions are. Okay. Um, the next question comes from, I think it's Lessig from Chief Delphi. Uh, how does 2056 design such simple mechanisms? Um, it comes down, uh, I think, to being able to brainstorm a lot with the team. We, after, like, the week after kickoff, we come together as a team and we think up ideas. Uh-huh. We come up with ideas that are good, some of them maybe not quite as good, um, but we look at them all and we figure out which ones we think will play the game the best, uh, which ones we think are going to be not the easiest, but the most simple and the most robust some systems to build. Um, and we even combine some ideas. Um, yeah. Um. All right. Well, simple enough. Um... Audrey from the Five Poofs would like to ask, um, what will change for 2020 with no bag? And and maybe because I know we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, like, what specifically do you think you guys will do differently? Like, do you think there's a chance you'll build a whole new robot, you know, halfway through the competition season or anything crazy like that? Or are you generally going to kind of do the same thing just, you know, for the most part? Um, our team senior leadership has, has met on this topic and um right now our plan is to not do a whole lot different um what we're doing is uh formalizing our build schedule uh in previous years we had a very rigid structured build schedule during the build season um and we're now just extending that to well championship um so that we know you know these are the days that we're meeting these are the days we will be at the school working on stuff and the mm-hmm. days that we are not there we are not coming in it's not like we're going to get pulled into this black hole where we're meeting seven days a week and blowing our brains out trying to 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 do stuff so our uh, general build timeline is probably going to be about a week behind what it has been in the past so we're in a is previous years we'd have a you know, functional practice robot in week four. Now that'll be week five. Um, And that's just to allow a little bit more time in the design phase to sort of flush out more ideas before we um, go to fabrication. But how, how, like how many days a week do you guys, or at least in the past, how many days a week have you guys normally met during, you know, build season? Um, is it every yeah, our, day or is it like a few, only a couple days a week? I mean, our our schedule in the build season is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 2.30 to 9.30. And Saturday is from 9 to 6. So we meet four days a week. And that's all of the, you know, structured meetings that, that we meet through the build season. So we're still going to meet four days a week for the first uh, six-ish weeks of build season. Uh, six-ish, six-ish weeks of the season. Um, and then in the, I don't even know what to call it, competition season, um, we'll have still regular hours, but it won't be, you know, as heavy as the old right. builds. I'm very confused by this all. I don't know what to make of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we're all, we're definitely all kind of feeling out what it's going to be like. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, like I know in the past, you guys usually, it seems like, you know, I, I guess I don't know. I'd have to look back at history, but it seems at least recently, like you guys haven't really gone for the week one or week twos quite as much. You usually kind of seem like you go for more like week three or so. Is that something you think you'll probably continue to do? Do you think you'll wait even longer if you can, or do you think you'll start going sooner on your first competition? Um, our schedule in the previous years has d- depended largely on what events were close to us and what weeks okay. they were. So in the last couple of years, we've been doing Waterloo and McMaster which are weeks four and six. Um, so you're just at the mercy of the district for the most part, then? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, as new districts get created, we have more flexibility, but mm-hmm. I mean, McMaster is 20 minutes down the road from us, and Waterloo is 45 minutes down the road from us. So for mm-hmm. us to not do those events 
well, it, it is a huge cost because then we're looking at, you know, hotels, hotels. and everything else. Yeah. Um, so those two events are sure. great. They're wonderful events. They're close. Um, okay. But they're weeks four and six. So that's what's driven our schedule before. If suddenly they move McMaster to week one, well, I'll be upset, but we'll probably still go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I, I don't think we're going to backload our schedule so that, you know, we compete later. Um, it takes a long time to flush out all the bugs in, you know, the robots that we're building these days. So I don't think teams that do these epic mid-season rebuilds will have the time required to f properly flush them out. Um, Interesting. But all right. Interesting. Uh, yeah, let's we'll, we'll keep moving on. Uh, Mustard Lab from 2481 would like to ask, uh, are there any issues or oddities traveling from Canada to the U.S.? No. <laughs> All right. None. Yeah, I mean, I, I, have... <laughs> I, I was just going to say, oh. like, I, we competed at Windsor, you know, for the last couple of years, and I know, like, we had no problems, so I would expect there's nothing super complicated for you guys. <laughs> we, we did lose a bumper last year. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Shipping the oh. robot, <laughs> robot back from Detroit, we put the, the bumpers in the crate, and when it got back, we were missing a side bumper. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody from customs uh, was envious of 2056, apparently. Maybe. They wanted those. They wanted those shiny bumper, the shiny bumper technology. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, LC910 from Discord asks, uh, "What is the team outside of Ontario that you like to work with?" Maybe you guys can all give like a quick answer. Eric, you want to go ahead? Sorry, what was the question? I was on uh, what is what is a team outside of Ontario that you like to work with? So oh. I'm sure there's many, but I guess pick um, one. Well, obviously two fifty four. Uh, <laughs> I mean Yeah. I don't think I need to say any more. Two fifty four. You guys get to work right. with two fifty four much or what? Uh, <laughs> no, I mean sometimes on Saturdays we, we meet up no, no. <laughs> no. It's been a while since you got to compete with with two fifty four, so Yeah. Sarah? Uh, I don't know if this is exactly, like, there's a team I want to work with. Like, I've met a lot of really nice teams, you know, at, on like, Ontario districts. Uh, I mean, it always would be cool to work with 254, but, you know, I think it's, you know, I don't think there's, like, one team I'd like to work with. Like, I'd like to keep working with different teams and meeting new people, but I don't think there's, like, one team I would really like to work with. All right. Tyler? Beach bots. Uh, fair, fair. Yeah. all right you know nobody wants to answer 33 that's fine you know whatever i'm not salty uh we, you oh, know what we've had wow. great success with 33 in the past i love playing with jim is hilarious like absolutely hilarious it is a riot um a stressful riot but a riot nonetheless <laughs> Oh, um, let's see. Trent from 1807 would like to ask, do you ever feel the stress of expectations that many people have of you in FRC? Yes. It, yeah. Um, I know, especially when like the streak was going on that our driver felt a, real, a lot of pressure because it was, everyone was watching us waiting for, you know, that one loss when we finally lost the regional and it was broken. And I feel like, you know, we're always told at regionals to, kind of watch what we're doing because we don't want people to find a reason to say something about us. So, you know, don't be rambunctious. Don't be causing trouble. Uh, you know, a lot of people are watching us for just about anything. And, you know, as a driver, as part of the drive team, I do see, you know, behind the glass, I'm watching our driver that, you know, sometimes during like before elimination matches, he can get, you know, he really has to get into his own head zone because he just feels all the eyes are on him. And, you know, we really feel like you have to, hit that bar every single year. It's like, I got to be as good as or better as a driver than the last driver. I have to be, we have to do better than this last year. We have to do the same level. It's just, you know, you always have, you always feel like you have to do more than what you've already done. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Tackle Bat from Discord would like to ask, are you a fan of qualifying, matching, qualifying matches having extra RP opportunities other than the win? very much so oh yes yeah do you guys um, have any specific reason um for me anyways yeah. qualifying is especially the championship is such a crapshoot it's like 
you're totally at the schedule of uh, or at the mercy of the scheduling gods. Uh, Ten matches to se separate seventy teams is not enough to determine uh, a proper top eight. So when there's those extra RP opportunities for uh, top teams to separate themselves, it really it really helps to flush out the top eight without having to add extra matches to a qual cycle. All right, fair enough. Uh, clearly, it works well for you guys. Uh, uh, dare, dare. I think, sorry, yeah. Dare, maybe it's Dare. Uh, from 2655, would like to ask, uh, can you talk about drills for driver tryouts and training for competition? Or, or if you do tryouts, maybe. I don't know. You know. Do you guys do that? How do you guys approach picking your drive team, I guess? So we, we don't have, like, formal tryouts. Um, typically, the driver is... Um, the driver usually selects themselves. They demonstrate the skills that are required to drive through their own character. And then we say, hey, you're really awesome at this. We want you to drive. There's no like trying out Jimmy versus John in the obstacle course. That's not that's not how it works. Um, we, we look for the kids who um, demonstrate the skills and, and criteria that we look for in a driver over the course of the build season. And then we put our faith in them to drive for us for you know the season or potentially more and we typically try to have drivers drive for two to three years um mm -hmm. and that that gives them the opportunity to gain more experience to be able to get around a defender to be able to know how how the robot behaves and um i mean you look at like formula one drivers they drive for 15 15 years in, in a in a you know their typical career and we have frc drivers who drive for 45 minutes like it, it's crazy <laughs> yeah <laughs> we need your help to keep fun at loud live and independent help us by visiting our patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now you can also support fun live on twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your prime account for free and clicking subscribe Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.